Okay, so alchemy. And I hate this synth. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. It is so bloody complicated. It's a complete nightmare. And there's really no manual for it. I mean, there is a really basic manual, but it doesn't explain it really at all. So, look, I've made it my quest in life to learn more about alchemy. I don't want to, but it's got me intrigued on an intellectual level. So, um, come with me now on my journey of adventure into the unknown. All right. So, let's start with the basic, you know, the basics. Here's alchemy. Let's cut to the chase. Advanced. Bam. This is the engine of alchemy. All right. The first thing you want to know is how do I cut it down to the absolute basics so I can start to bring things in and learn it bit by bit? Well, we go to File, Initialize Preset, bam. And that sets alchemy to this very raw state of a single sawtooth oscillator source, right? Feeding into this filter, which is actually doing nothing. After the filter, there's an effect send turned up full, but there are no effects for it. It's not sending into any actual effects. And the only thing that's going on is the master volume here is assigned to this envelope as the amplitude envelope for the whole voice. And velocity sensitivity is also assigned to the master volume. Right? Simple, single, sawtooth oscillator. Now, this upper area here is the sound generating bit, and this is the modulation bit. Forget all this down here for now, right? Now, alchemy, and we're in global, by the way, at the moment, so we see a global view with the basic stuff. And alchemy is a one, two, three, four oscillator synthesizer. However, these four slots, oscillator slots, are referred to as sources because, yes, each of them can function as a traditional oscillator section, but any of them can do all sorts of other types of synthesis and mix different types of synthesis, right, as well as playing audio. All right. So they're referred to as sources because they can generate sounds in many different ways. But I'm going to refer to them as oscillator source slots because that kind of helps us to know that that's the oscillator bit, the bit generating the sound, even if it's not necessarily being done with a straightforward oscillator, right? OK, so there are four of those. And in this global view, we see each of them with the very, very basic controls of volume, and that's the level leaving that source slot. Tuning in semitones, so coarse tuning, pan, and this send control, two-way send control, which by default is set to F1, F2, which is filter 1 and filter 2. I'll explain more about this in a moment. Right? So the four slots are visible, each with volume, semitone tuning, pan, and this send to the two filters. Okay, followed by the two filters here. And after each of those filters, there's an effects send, which can send into the main effects bus or any of the four sub effects buses. And then over here, we have the master section, master volume, master pan, coarse and fine tuning. This is your voice allocation bit. And here's your glide or portamento rate and time. All right. All right. But um, this is global view. But we can go into the detail view and look at the details for each individual oscillator source slot, A, B, C, and D. There's also this morph tab, but we're going to leave that for now. Just leave that, right? So let me turn off these three and um, let's just look at A. So this is the details for oscillator source slot A. Okay. Now, at the top, just like in global, we have this sort of menu here, right? It's the same in details view. And this is the menu slot for the whole voice oscillator slot. So it can do, it, it, it allows you to um, load. And the source, remember, is everything that can be in this slot generating sounds, which could be a combination of 
oscillators, additive synthesis, audio samples being mangled by different types of synthesis, all sorts of things could be making sounds from this slot and some of them can they can operate at the same time and combine. So the combination of everything you've got set here is called a source, so you can load previously created or factory sources, save created sources, copy and paste sources between the, whichever one and the others, clear the source completely, randomise it or swap it with the other sources. And also you can import audio from here. Now there's a sub-menu here, Load VA, which is I'm presuming Virtual Analog. This is a sub-menu where you're choosing waves to load into the actual oscillator over here. And that sub-menu for choosing which waves the oscillator will play is reproduced on the actual oscillator section over here. So the oscillator section here only has basic ability to choose what wave the oscillator is going to generate. Here we can also access that and load the waves into the oscillator section, but all the other menu items are there pertaining to the whole slot, as well as loading audio okay, into that slot. Okay, We can solo the oscillator source slot here, switch it from stereo to mono, and we've got this edit button. All right, we'll come to this. Okay, Below that, we have the controls again, but they're different to the controls in Global. We've still got volume and pan, but we now have coarse semi-tune tuning and fine scent tuning. All right. Below that, there's this row of controls. Weight is a delay, an offset. When this source oscillator slot A receives a note on command, how long will it wait in musical timing, like 8, 16, whatever, before it actually makes a sound? You can offset the oscillator source slot to wait before it triggers. All right. Now here you've got your uh, key scaling. By default the oscillator source slot is set to respond to key pitch and pitch bend. You can switch it off completely so it doesn't respond to pitch in any way or set it to only respond to key pitch notes right, and not pitch bend. The default is both key pitch, note pitches and pitch bend. And then we've got this loop mode. Uh, we'll leave that for now. right? OK, now at the bottom here we have the filter section. Every oscillator source slot has up to three internal filters and these are completely different to the two external filters here. Right? Up to three internal filters and uh, you choose a filter, switch it on, and here's your choice of filter types. A bunch of low pass, band pass, high pass ones, and some special ones, right? And each uh, filter has cutoff, resonance, and drive. Now you can have up to three filters working. And once you have more than one filter operating, like I'll put all three on, once more than one is working, they can be arranged in series or parallel. Now, for beginners, in series, I've got three filters working, right? That means that the actual sound generating part of this oscillator source slot feeds into the filter one, passes through that into the next filter, out the other side of that, and into the next filter, and out the other side of that. Then it goes to the volume panel, etc., and off out of the slot. But if it's in, if the two or more filters are in parallel, then the signal leaves the sound generating part of the slot, comes over to the filters, and it's split into the two or three filters equally. It feeds through them individually, each one doing its thing, and then after the two or three filters, the signal is resummed and sent to the volume panel and off out of the slot. Okay, so up to three internal filters with lots of different filter types, All right? And they can be arranged if there's more than one in series or parallel, and. Um, Incidentally, the list of possible filter types for internal filters is exactly the same, as far as I can see, for the external filters that live here, after the voice oscillator slots, source slots, right? Okay. Okay. Now, next to the internal filter section, there's this send control, but this is just a copy of the one here in Global, which by default, as I said, sends to F1, that means all the way turn to the left, counterclockwise it's sending to filter 1, or F2 all the way that way it's sending to filter 2. 12 o'clock right down the middle it's sending to both filters equally, or any balance of the two that you want. 
Now that control is just reproduced here for convenience because you might want to be tweaking your internal filter and then readjust the balance that you're sending to the external filters. However, this control, let's go back and look at it in global. But yes, by default it sends to both filters, either one, the other, or a comb blend of, of either. But we can drop this list down and assign this send control to send to either of the filters on the left side and on the right side any of the four effects buses A, B, C or D. So if I set it to F1, filter 1 and effects A, all the way left it's sending to filter 1. All the way right it's sending to effects bus A or any balance of the two. If I set it to F2 FXA, then all the way to this side, it's sending to filter 2. All the way that way, it's sending to FX bus A, or any balance between the two. Right? And then it just repeats that for the other four FX buses. So F1 FXB, choose that. All the way this way, it's sending to filter 1. All the way that side to FX bus B, or any balance between the two. And F2 FXB, all the way that way it's sending to filter 2, all the way that way it's sending to effects bus B or any balance, etc, etc. And you can do the same for um, effects buses C and D. Okay, so that's that control, but it is reproduced here for convenience, as I said, because you might want to tweak your internal filter, and as you do that you're altering the sound of this source slot, and you then want to readjust the send to the filter effects or whatever it's going to to or you know balance against what you've done with the internal filter right so that's that let's put it back to its default f1 f2 okay that's this bit in now over here in this va tab because there's all these different tabs this is the actual raw oscillator okay choose the wave to load into it here or again from this sub menu here on the main slot right now You've got a volume control here. That is the volume leaving the oscillator section. Whereas the volume over here is the volume leaving the entire source slot. Right? Okay, um, so we've got a simple sawtooth oscillator. There's the wave shape there. But every one of the oscillators in all the four source slots has unison, up to 16 part unison. Now, as I'm turning up the number of unison sawtooth parts, it's getting louder and louder. It's overloading the meter. You see there's a meter working behind the slot here into the red. So I'm going to lower the oscillator output. OK, up to 16 part unison with detune. So now it's creating 16 sawtooth oscillators in unison. Now, if I turn the detune all the way down and start to bring in the unison parts, it's just stacking them. OK, um, at exactly the same pitch and everything. So you just see this subtle phasing as you bring in more and more and more unison parts and it just gets louder and louder. OK, so that's 12 unison sawtooth parts being operated now, uh, generated. But they all, they're all just laid on top of each other. So now we bring in the detune and that starts to detune them separately from each other and it pans them out separately from each other. And we are operating a stereo voice slot here, right? You know, as extreme or subtle as you want. Okay. Further, we've got these controls here. Symmetry. And with most of the waveforms that you choose, it is a, as you push it in either direction, positive or negative, as you start to get to full travel in either direction from 12 o'clock, It just kind of thins the sound out as the waveform is skewed in one or the other direction, pushed, you know, like uh, like I'm pushing on it that way or that way. And you alt left click to reset the value of any parameter, right? We've got phase and sync up to 48 semi tone sync, right? Now below that there's the noise generator or noise oscillator. Let's just turn the actual oscillator off and there are all these different types of noise. 
let's have a listen to them there's brown noise and these are just recordings of noise right brown noise carpet crinkle fan hair oh sorry fire hair liquid that actually sounds a bit like the goo pit noise in when you're building unreal tournament maps or something um ocean pink pink noise right radio you know, it's like radio static Va uh, straw vinyl which is the sound of a needle going around a record and white noise okay you've got a low and high cut here to cut out upper or lower frequencies you don't want a volume and a tune right so let's bring the oscillator back in no, i'm just thinning out this white noise and then we'll balance it in with the oscillator okay so i've got this single source slot generating a 12 part sawtooth unison with white noise okay now I'm going to go to the slot here and copy the source I've created and paste it to the other three slots. Paste, paste, paste. Okay, and now all four oscillator source slots are doing a 12 part unison saw tooth oscillator with white noise. Okay, now they're all quite loud because they're all doing unison, so they're, they're all feeding by default into filter one. They've all got their send control set to F filter one, filter two, and all to the left to filter one. And the combination of all four of those blasting into the filter is overloading it. There's a meter behind the filter slot as well. So I'm going to just lower their levels down so they're not chucking out so much level. Okay, now I'll detune them differently. I'll tune this one up an octave, 12 semitones. This one down an octave. And by the way, with this new alchemy, you can type these values in, like minus 12. Because that's tuned down an octave, that's tuned up an octave. This one will tune down two octaves. Oop, 24 semitones, and then we'll leave that one raw. We've got a big multi-oscillator sawtooth sound, unison sawtooth sound. Let's give it some filter. <laughs> Right, that's not working that filter, I'll just turn it off. Okay, yeah, there you go. Easy peasy stuff, right? That's not too hard, right? Okay, uh, let's turn these off. Go back to the details for this oscillator source slot A. Right, now that's the basic oscillator. But notice there are all these other tabs. This is the sound generating part of the whole slot. So that's a raw oscillator with noise, but notice this tab additive is active now this additive section um i don't want to spend too long on this because this is just a general introduction video to alchemy okay and we need to come back and look at all these bits in a lot more detail but um the additive section allows you to uh, create additive synthesis uh, but also, when you import audio into Alchemy, it can be analysed for its partial content, and then you can mess with the actual partials analysed from a piece of audio to resynthesize some audio using additive tweaking or additive synthesis tweaking. Right. However, the additive synthesis section works on its own, whether you know, even if you haven't um, loaded any audio. Now, when I first started messing with this. Um, because again there's not really any much depth to the manual um, I assumed that the additive section here was creating sine wave partials that were modulating the original oscillator waveform but it doesn't work like that at all you can completely turn off the oscillator and the additive section will generate sounds and you can you can create additive synthesis sounds using just this section however there's more to it because if you go to edit additive there's a whole additive map here that, that this gets populated when you analyze an imported piece of audio for its partial content but also you can use this to generate and create additive synthesis partials yourself okay i'll come back to that in a bit so very kind of briefly um you can have the oscillator completely off and and create additive synthesis let's turn this off um basically 
you've got a partial it works with sine waves by default but you can go to complex in which case it's still working with sine wave partials but you now get a symmetry control but you can load up and this appears to be the same choice of uh, waveforms as is available to the oscillator okay and you can create additive partial synthesis with any of these different waveforms but we'll stick with with sine so there's a volume control just like with the regular oscillator and then you've got this part number of partials control okay now partials um all right, let's do the history bit now. I think this is right. If you go way, way back of two or three hundred years back in time, there was this bloke called Helmholtz, who was probably German with a name like Helmholtz. I mean, he could have been Swiss or Austrian or something. But uh, he proposed that all sounds that you hear, whether it's a, an orchestra playing a note, a singer sustaining a note, a guitar being played, a piano or an organ being played, a cello being played or whatever, or real life sounds like a, a waterfall, making the noise of a waterfall or a dog barking or you know any sound whether naturally created in nature or created by instruments etc this guy Helmholtz proposed that all sounds are created by hundreds thousands or even millions of individual sine waves and remember a sine wave is, is a wave with that form like that right which are all vibrating at different pitches or frequencies and they modulate each other and interact with each other to create all the possible overtones, harmonics, subharmonics, inharmonic uh, you know, uh, overtones to create the overall complexity and timbre of any sound that you hear. So in essence the way this works is we have a partial generator, and if it's set to one, then we just hear a single partial, the number one root fundamental partial sine wave, which is that very flute-like tone. Uh, sine waves have no harmonics. But if we increase it to two partials, we've now brought in the octave above one. So now we hear the root fundamental and the first octave. And it's got that kind of really basic organ-like sound. But notice, because there are now two partials playing, one an octave above the other, they're modulating each other. So the sine wave smoothness, that completely smooth, tubular, ooh, sound with no harmonics at all, oh, with no harmonics at all, add in the, the octave two. So we've got two partials, one an octave above the other. And we not only hear the octave, but there's now an edge coming into the sound because the two sine waves are modulating each other to produce a harder edge. And then bring in the third partial. It gets a little bit more edgy. The fourth partial, which is the octave above two. We now have the uh, second harmonic in there, and it's getting edgier still. Bring in the fifth partial. Sixth, seventh, and as I bring in more and more partials of higher and higher pitch, these sine waves are modulating, in, in other words, vibrating each other, and they're creating overtones. And the more partials, higher and higher, higher up in pitch you add, the higher in pitch the overall sound is at its top end, but it introduces more and more of a buzz. Right? So we're at six, seven, eight. Now we're bringing the octave above four, etc. So that's at 16 partials now. So we've got the root fundamental, 1, the octave, 2, 4, 8, and 16, and all the odd and even partials in between. And now it's got a buzzy quality. And, you know, the more partials you add going up, the higher and higher the fizz gets at the top end. So that's like 48 partials now. So we've got the octaves... Um, Sorry, third, let's, let's put it at 32. That'll give us the octaves. Um, 2, 4, come on, 32. 2, 4, 6, sorry, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Okay. But they're, mod they're, they're all sine waves, but they're now modulating each other, they're vibrating each other, and we get this buzz. We're nothing like a sine wave anymore. Right? Okay, so additive synthesis... 
Um, if you think about early additive synths, the Ensonic synths, and of course the Yamaha FM frequency modulating uh, synths, frequency modulation is where one or more sine waves modulate one or more sine waves, which creates new waveforms, new sounds. These additive synths, if you think about it when they came out, they produced these hard edge sounds different to older analog subtractive synths. And particularly, they could create bell-like sounds and metallic-like sounds, glockenspiel and clock chime-type tones. So this kind of makes, very quickly to show you, this kind of makes more sense if we change the overall amplitude envelope of the voice. If I reduce the decay... Um, no, let's turn the sustain down like that and then give it a little bit of hold so we get a more like a, a little blip note like that which decays away okay now there's the basic 32 partials some partials all playing together working up from the fundamental and then you can bring in these of these uh, menu items here and these things well this first list here all of these things they are going to affect or modulate the amplitude of different partials that are being generated this list of things that you can choose here these will mess with the pitch of particular partials and this final menu here, these are effects, EQ, comb filters, spreaders, auto panners, etc, which work on the partials in other ways. So we've got this kind of percussive-like sound there. I've brought in this, I've brought in this menu and just quickly, if I choose harmonic, okay, these things are going to mess with the harmonics of the partials. Okay, now this is your fundamental, turn that up full. And all we hear is the fundamental, the root, right? Turn it that way, we hear no fundamental. So you're just messing, you know, with the harmonics. This is the octaves. You know, that's messing with none of the octaves. That's messing with all of them. That's your fifths. These are your odds, evens that way. And with even, we lose the root fundamental, which is one. And it's more sawtoothy, buzzy, sweeter in that way. And this way, odds is more hollow and square wavy. So if I, you know, there already with this short amplitude envelope um, decay sustain thing going on here, a more percussive type uh, volume envelope, there's a sort of bell like, not bell, sort of like a clockworky percussive bell. Type sound, right? Um, if we go with this pulse and saw, um, you got oscillate. Well, this is the general tone control. Okay, oscillator sync up to 48 semitones. So, you have got pulse saw this way. It's more square-like with all the odd, harm the harm odd harmonics. Um, uh, or the odd partials are being emphasised. And even that way. Um, sawtooth that way, rather. And this way is evens. And odds, which is a similar effect. And then we've got a kind of more plucky-like sound there. Um, if we go with this saw and noise, this is, uh, you've got a noise, a sawtooth and noise oscillator modulating the partials. This is the rate control, so like that's 30 seconds. That's a general tone control. Turn the smoothing down, you can hear the sawtooth and noise oscillator wobbling the partials. You know, at 30 seconds or whatever. So all these things just, they mess with the all the ones here are messing with the amplitude, the volume of particular partials. But as I showed you, you know, with this one, 
We can use it to... to get a more... you know, sort of glockenspiel type sound, right? I'll bring up the decay more. You know what I mean? Um, these things here mess with the pitch, um, you know, in different ways. We need to come back and really look at this in some detail. But, you know, if I just take this and... I'm starting to detune the partials now. Um, or the shift one. I could choose a frequency, like say oh, 2,500, 250 hertz around there. And then I can drag the partials away from that or nearer to that pitch. It's not a very clockworky sound, lower down. Etc. right? So all these, you know, they're just having, they're just affecting They're affecting the partial pitch. And then there are these effects here. Things like auto pan. So there's a kind of sugar plum fairy sort of. The note I'm playing with here is up at C3. If I transpose down two octaves, we're getting a bell like tone there almost. Etc. Right, and um, just there's an EQ in here with low, high, and low and high mid. Oh, there's a comb filter. Um, there's a regular filter with the choice of low or um, high pass, cutoff resonance, etc. You know, so all this allows you to manipulate these partials to create additive synthesis type sounds. Right, let's put the um, pitch back up of that. That's up uh, one octave, now back up to the original pitch of those notes, which is, as I say, around C3. Okay, now, just turn all this off. But there is another part to the additive, just quickly to show you. As I say, we'll come back and look at this in more depth. When you import a piece of audio, it can be analysed for its um, partial content, which you can then manipulate in this additive map here, which gets generated when a piece of audio is analysed for its partial content. But this also, you can build partial um, synth additive synthesis here as well. But the point, but the thing is, once you start, if you just come to this section here and don't touch anything and go back here, this all still works. Right, this all still works. But if you go to this bit and you start messing with this, like just move that one fundamental root partial, come back here, this no longer works because you've overridden this, not this bit, but this bit with this. So now to get the partials back, that idea I was working with 32 partials here, to get that back, because I've now, I've now only got the root fundamental. So I just, um, this is set to all. So if I just draw in, let's say, up to 32 partials like that, and we're working with the volume level at the moment, because, you, because these partials could be manipulated all together as a block. You can work on them individually, one at a time. You can work with all the evens, all the odds, all the octaves and all the fifths. Like if I get all the octaves, I can go, there's all the octaves up or down. If I get all the evens, I can go there's lowering or raising all the evens or lowering or raising all the odds, etc. But there's like a whole bunch of fun uh, um, uh, partials from the root fundamental all the way up to 32. 
Um, and now I've put those back in, going back here, I, I, I can now work with those 32 partials. I can reduce how many I'm listening to here. Right, but the maximum I'll be able to work with is how many I drew here. So you can manipulate the partials here as well. You can select them um, in these different groups, all of them, mess with just one at a time, all the evens, all the fifths, all the octaves, all the odds, etc. And affect their volume, tuning, pan, or phase relative to each other. And then here you've got this shape thing which allows you to, you know, with bright, you're affecting now, look, the odd, all the odd partials. With bright, I'm affecting the higher end, brighter partials relative to the lower end. Or in dark, I'm adjusting the lower end partials relative to the higher, brighter ones, etc. You know, um, so you can mess here and, and, and do things with the partials. But once you've put some partials in here, that's the maximum amount of partials you have available to work with here. You can reduce the amount with this control number of partials. But you can't go above the amount you've got here. I've got 32 partials here, so going up there doesn't create any more. Doesn't get any high, doesn't get any higher in pitch. Alright. Alright. We need to come back and look at this, but that's additive synthesis, but it can work. Let's put the envelope for the whole voice here back to default. Let me do it clear. That's the default. Right. Turn all this off and just go back to just some partials doing buzz. Now I can blend that in with the actual oscillator plus its noise. We've got the oscillator 12 part unison. Right, it's just like that level. And I can blend in additive with that. Give it that nice bright edge as well. You know what I mean? And whatever. You can mix oscillator with noise or without with additive. But this section also works when you import audio and you're analysing for the partial content. Okay, right. And one last thing: once you've got additive switched on, format becomes active. The analyze bit doesn't work because that only functions if you've imported audio and analyzed it for format content. The synthesize works. This is just four different filters. You can change them and that it's set by default to classic A, E, I and U, which is, you know, a, a, a resonant A, E, I, U. And you can select which one. Um, and this just affects the resonant. The resonance, turn the Turn that off. The resonant quality of the partials. That you're you're messing with, right? So U I E A. You know what I mean? And Yeah, it's just, that affects the resonance in with different tonal quality. But anyway, all this we've got to come back and look at it more in more detail. But you know, you can mix your in a, in a straightforward sense. If you're just messing with oscillators, no no audio loaded, you can um, use the oscillator with noise and mix that with additive synthesis, or whatever you like. Right? Okay. But I say we need to come back and look at all of these tabs in much more detail. Um, but we'll get into that when we. You know, get to the details bit. Uh, but this is just a general walkthrough, right? Okay, so that's additive. Uh, let's move on. And let's look at the modulation section now. Let's get that down. Now, any parameter of alchemy, including effects, can be modulated by any of the modulators, which is LFOs envelopes, multi-segment envelopes, sequences, or envelope followers. You always have one of each to start with, and you can create more and more and more, as many as you like, of any of them, right? So, pardon me. So, look, here's the LFO. Current, there's one LFO, right? Here, there is no show targets. If I go to this envelope, show targets is there because this is envelope number one 
it is assigned to something. Show type, it's assigned to the master volume here. This is our amplitude envelope for the voice. How the voice volume works when it receives a note. At the current, it's instant attack on. It holds that level for as long as the note is held. That's the release point, and then when it releases, it lets go with that speed. And this is a quarter second, half a second, three quarters of a second, etc. So if I put extra release on long release, the note start. You know, when the note let goes, lets go. That's when that line leaves that blob. That's where the note ends. You hear the voice decay away to silence with this long release. So the notes start to spill into each other. If I have a slower attack, then the, the sound fades up over a quarter of a second. And you can adjust the curve of that. Etc. Right, that's it. Okay. So, um, we've got LFOs, envelopes, multiseg envelopes, sequences, and envelope follows. This mod map, is, is, we're not going to look at that now, right? That, this, you can't, that's, let's get into that later. So there's one of each of those modulators, and and any parameter can be modulated by any of the modulators, right? So if we just work with the cutoff, it's really easy to understand. There's our cutoff, okay? And I select it, click on it, and it becomes the target here. Filter one cutoff in the modulation here, and we're going to assign it to. Well, we can assign it to any of those modulators, right? We're going to assign it to the LFO one. LFO one is not assigned to anything, right? Oops. So filter one cutoff, assign it to LFO one. Now show targets filter one cutoff, right? Now we can give it positive depth as I increase the depth, either positive or negative. You see an orange line extending out around from the center frequency, right? Now if I give it positive depth, this LFO will modulate the filter from the lowest orange level up to the highest orange level and back down in that order, up, down, up, down. If I give it negative depth, it will do it the other way around. It will modulate it down, up, down, up, right? So give it positive depth. Sync is on and the LFO is going to modulate the filter cutoff at quarter beats. <laughs> And as each note is pretty much a quarter beat, over the cycle of that note, the filter goes up and down. Let's bring in a pattern with a single note lasting a bar in length. Okay, so the note plays, the filter modulates, uh, the filter is being modulated at quarter beats by the LFO. Eighths. Sixteenths, etc. If we take sync off, then this works in hertz. Okay, put it back to quarters. Now, actually, I'll put it to eights. Now there's a delay here. Again, we're in sync, so the delay works in musical timing. So um, this note is a whole bar in length. So I'm going to set this to a quarter beat, which means that the note will sound and you'll count one quarter beat and then the LFO will come in modulating the filter at eighths. So one beat, wow, 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 one, two, woo, three, e, four, one, two, woo, three, e, four, like that. Right, and then let's turn the delay off so it responds, the, the LFO starts wobbling at quarters, but we'll bring up the attack. So it takes, let's put the attack to half a bar. So yes, as soon as the note sounds, actually at eights, this LFO will start wobbling the filter at eights, but it'll take half a bar. The attack is set to half a bar. It'll take half a bar for the LFO to modulate the filter from its fullest high to its fullest low depth. It'll start off modulating it just a little and then get wider and wider and wider as 
over the half a bar. So it's taking half a bar for the full range of the LFO, modulating from the lowest to the highest level, to come in. And there's a, and there's a phase as well. Uh, but you got so many different waves, and some of them are <laughs> really cool. I mean, just, let's turn that off. Um, there's random ones, but there's some. Let's go to these. Um, turn that to quarters. You can, you can, you, you go with lower speeds on a longer note, and you see these shapes. You can actually hear the shape you're seeing. Yeah, wah wah wah. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, up up longer one, da da da. Yeah, yeah, wah wah wah, getting less each time. Wah wah wah, wah wah wah. Now it's four of them. Wah 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 wah. Yeah, one two three four five, one two three four five, etc. It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Clever. Yeah, wah wah wah, wah wah wah, getting less. That's four of them. Wah 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 wah. Five. Six. Etc. Right. There's just so many different waves. Right. Go back to a basic song. All right. Now. Um, That's, we've got one LFO working, one LFO, which is assigned to the filter one cutoff. If I want to create, if I want to modulate something else with another LFO, let's say the effects main send, I select it, there it is, filter one effects mix, and I can create a new LFO to assign to it. New LFO, bam. Now, there are two LFOs. LFO one assigned to the filter cutoff, LFO2 assigned to the filter one FX mix. Give it some depth. And now this LFO at a speed of quarters will modulate that effects send up and down. Okay, if I want to make another LFO, I might go here, LFO, new LFO I've created now. There are three of them. The third one isn't assigned to anything yet. I'll make another one. Now there's four. Four LFOs. Only the first two are assigned to anything, but these two exist, which could be assigned to something else, to modulate something else. So you can create as many as you want by doing that, and then assign them to whatever you want. To delete, you delete the last one created. So I'll delete LFO4. If anything was assigned to be modulated by that, the orange line around it would disappear, and it would no longer be modulated by that LFO. LFO. Now there's only three. Get rid of the third one, delete LFO three. You delete in reverse order to which they were created. Now there's two. Now LFO two is assigned to, let's choose it. There's a bug where the numbers stay. LFO one is assigned to the filter. LFO two is assigned to the, oh, also the filter. And then that happened. Okay, well, let's get rid of it. LFO two, get rid of. Bam. So now, Sorry, delete LFO2. So now there's only one LFO. But there is a bug where when you delete, when you create more than one LFO or more than one envelope, more than one multi-seg envelope, more than one sequencer or more than one envelope follower, their numbers appear. But when you start deleting them, now there's only one LFO. Look, there's only one LFO, but the number here still says there's two. So there's a but that's a bug. All right. Okay, but that's how you create more and delete like if you want more LFOs, more envelopes, more multi-seg envelopes, more sequences, more envelope followers, that's how you do it. You just go LFO, new LFO, envelope, new envelope, multi-seg envelope, new, sequencer, new, envelope follower, new, etc. And then delete the ones the same way, you know, go and delete the last one, the last one, whatever. Okay. So there's the LFO. Now um there are some extra settings. There's a file setting here which allows you to save a created preset, copy and paste, or load a preset. And there's clear, which will clear the LFO back to its default, which is a sine wave, actually. I'll put it in a different wave. Bam. File, clear, goes back to a sine wave at quarters, right? 
Okay, so you've got the file there to save and load presets, copy and paste, because you might set up an LFO and want to copy and paste it into the set to modulate the same parameter in another of the voice slots, you know, whatever, and clear. Okay. Um, there's this trigger thing, on, off, voice on, effects off. That I haven't looked into yet. We'll leave that for when we get into this in more detail. I'm just trying to show you the basics here, right? Okay, LFO. Let's stop it being modulate, stop it modulating the filter cutoff. I'll click the filter cutoff. There it is. Being mod modulated by this LFO. And we just do none. The LFO still exists, but it's no longer modulating the filter cutoff. Instead, let's modulate the filter cutoff with the envelope, but not this envelope. That's modulate. Um, that's assigned as the amplitude envelope, modulating the master volume uh, of the patch. Right, so it comes on, stays on, and decays away when the note ends. So, cutoff. There it is as the target. Filter one cutoff. Assign it to a new envelope. Make a new one. Bam. Now there are two envelopes. Envelope one assigned to the master volume. That's our amp envelope, and envelope two assigned to the filter cutoff. Okay, so give it more depth like that. I've given it positive depth. So whatever this filter does, when it goes from a lower to a higher value, it's going to move the filter from its lower to its higher orange value, right? So let's bring in. We've got the long note still. Now the filter, uh, the envelopes can be put in sync like that. In which case, you see behind bars and, you know, this is beat one with sixteenths in, beat two with sixteenths, beat three, beat four, etc. Or in time, that's 0.25 of a second, half a second, 0.5, three quarters of a second, one second, etc. And if you, the, these are, these controls uh, when you are not in sync are in milliseconds or points of a second. But if you go into sync, they become musical values like quarters, eight, sixteenths, etc. Right. So we've got a long note playing, and the filter over half a second, 0.5 a second, is going to fade up from the lower orange value up to the higher orange value. Once it reaches that higher value, it'll hold that for as long as the note lasts until the note ends, which is that blob there, and then that is the filter being released back down to its lower level when the note decays away to silence, when the note stops. Or I've got it attacking for half a second and then that's the decay. Let's make the decay another half a second pretty much. But over that decay period it will sus the sustain will drop off. Like that. So the filter will rise up over half a second and while the note is still being held die away over the next half a second. And then because it's a long note it, uh, the filter has turned down at this point it waits for the note to end and then let's go. Yeah, or it's a longer note, clearly. So let's go into sync. It's it's a whole bar in length. So um, let's have it um, attack over half the bar, two beats, beat one, beat two. No, att attack over one beat. Come on. Attack over a quarter beat. Then hold, because there's a hold control. Hold for a quarter beat. Decay over the final two beats, but as it decays, it lowers the filter right down over those final two beats. So that's the whole bar. Like that. Easy peasy, yeah? Alright. Um, again, just like with the LFO, if I want to create another envelope to assign to something else, let's say this effect send, I just select it and make another envelope. New ADA HDSR. Now there are three. Number one, assigned to the master volume, that's our amp envelope. Number two, assigned to the filter cutoff. Number three, assigned to the filter effects mix. Give it some depth and that will turn up 
over the kind of length of the note. Shut up, cat. Etc. Just feed the cats quickly. So anyway, just like with the LFOs, I've created, I showed you how to create, it's the same with the envelopes, you just do, you know, new envelope. There are now three created. If I delete the third one, because you have to delete them in reverse order, if I delete the third one, it's assigned to this effect send. So if I delete it, it will no longer be controlling that effect send and the orange line disappears. Right. Um, let's get rid of the second one so there'll be no longer uh, an envelope controlling that filter so that will disappear I mean if you want to keep the envelope but not have it control something then click on whatever it's controlling okay filter cutoff being controlled by envelope 2 there's envelope 2 but I want to keep the envelope but not have it control the cutoff maybe so it can then be assigned to something else so I just go to none for the filter 1 cutoff and that filter is no longer, that cutoff is no longer being controlled by this envelope, but the envelope still exists to be assigned to something else, you know, whatever you want. Or, you know, I just delete the envelope and it no longer controls the filter. So let's delete that envelope, delete envelope two. Bam, we're down to one envelope controlling the master volume as the amplitude envelope. Right? Now, again, with the envelopes, you've got file, just like with LFO, right? You got file. You can load presets, save presets, copy, paste, and clear. But there's also a randomize that will just make random envelopes every time you choose randomize. All right? Clear puts it back to the default. All right? And I've shown you the sync already. Bars and beats. Right? Again, this has this trigger on, off, voice on, effects off. I have not looked into that yet. Let's leave that for the details. Right. Okay, next, the multi-segment envelope. This is very cool, this one. Let's assign the filter cutoff to it. Click the filter cutoff. There it is, there's the target. Assign it to the multi-segment envelope number one. Give it some positive depth. So this envelope, whatever shape I make here, is going to modulate from the lower level to a higher level, from the low orange value up to the higher orange value of the cutoff. Now, this is brilliant because with this, you just click and input nodes, and you can make your own envelopes. <laughs> it'll just, it'll just do it. You know, just whatever you, you're modulating will follow this envelope, and then can be as bonkers as you want. Do you know what I mean? The file has randomized, which will just make you loads of, you know, just like the others, the other envelope does. And if you put it in sync, you're going to get bars and beats. So, you know, I could go, well, look, I'm going to have a filter rising up on that 16th. And so it's going to go, up. come on. You can adjust these curves, by the way. Quite, They can be quite extreme if you drag them all the way. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm just putting in these nodes and... These are sixteenths the lines in between the beats. So I'm just making a sixteenth sort of thing with these wobbling up. And then this last bit, let's have it do that. Um you got these extra settings. Snap Y. It's set to off, which means as I adjust these on the whoops, come on. As I adjust these on the y-axis, they're free to be adjusted to any value I want from zero to a hundred percent in height. But I can set this to say one eight, which means that this will it's got a value on the y-axis of eight. One, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the top. Yeah? Or just one in four, which means I've got four steps in height. What are zero, one, two, 
three, four. Right? So that's what that is, snap Y. Um, now you've got this loop mode. Um, it's in sustain at the moment. Now that's it's hard to get out. There's the loop mode. It works in sync or not in sync, it's up to you. Um, and whoopsie daisy, this this snaps between nodes. Right, that's the start, that's the end point. Right. If I put sync on, um, does, it, does it snap between value lines? No, it still snaps between nodes. Now, this is the start, that's the end point. So it's set to sustain. The note is going to play, and this is just in the filter, and it'll filter around, but the note won't end until the end here. Right. So when it gets to there, that end point, it's just going to cycle back to here and just repeat that section. And as you can hear, if you if you think about it and work it out, you can do some very cool rhythmic stuff here. Like I make this last this bit here, right? In that repeat bit, my filter is going to. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, I'll put a node in there and have it do that. Yeah, or it could go. Come on, up. Or let's put more nodes in there. So in this section, it'll just do those little that bum 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 because it's going, to, it's getting to the end and coming straight back here and cycling round and round. Or you can have it doing um, forward back. Or continuous. And to be honest, I'm not, I can't see a difference between continuous and sustain. Anyway, there you go. And edit mode is set to normal by default. If you set it to slide, then if I grab a node and move it, everything else slides back with it. Right, everything after it. If I put it in stretch, then everything moves with it relative to the node I'm grabbing and moving around. And in normal, I'm just moving that node. Uh, again, like all the other modulators, there's this menu here, trigger, on, off, voice, on, effects off. I haven't looked into that yet. And it also has the file with load preset, save, copy, paste, clear, and randomize as I showed you already. Clear, we'll put it back to default. Right? That's brilliant, this thing. Absolutely brilliant. So let's clear it back to its default. Bam, there it is. Right? Again, like with all the other modulators, to make another one, you just go new multiseg envelope. Now there's two of them. Delete the last one. Bam, back to just one. Okay. Okay, next sequencer. Cut off. Selected as the target, let's assign it to sequencer one, which isn't assigned to anything, but now it is. It's assigned to the built one cutoff. Again, we'll give it positive depth, which means that at the highest one of these steps in, in the sequencer is it will be at the highest value of the orange line, and at the zero, lowest level of a ladder, it'll the filter will be at the lowest level of that orange line. Okay. And this is, you know, you can just the, the sequence has up to 128 steps. Right. Put it back to 16, the default. And it's modulating the cutoff. It's really cool, this thing. It's really cool. Now, here's your rate. That's the timing of the sequencer, eighths, etc. 
Right, 16, let's put it back to, you've got a swing control. Right. Now the hold is how long it holds the value at the upper level or whatever level the step is, how long it holds that for. So you can reduce it really, really fine. It, it'll just it'll just hold that level for a little tiny bit and blip. It makes it more blippy. And if I bring up some resonance, you'll hear that. Let's put the cut up a bit. So now it's on a tiny amount of hold. So it's just blipping that filter up for a split second, like that. Or much longer. Release how long it lets takes to let go. Okay, an attack how long it takes to, to build up to the level of whatever the ladder is. So that's like wah wah wah. Yeah. Right. And by the way, these are ties. You can tie steps. Etc. Right. Um. You've got, uh, so that's, this is the rate, how s the speed of it, you know, 16th is in the note. The value snap here, again, it's off, so these ladders are freely adjustable between, in, in percent, 0 to 100%, but I could put this to 8, and then I'm restricted to 8 steps for my ladders, right, or whatever I want. 3 steps, so it's either going to be off, 1, two or full three you know, whatever you yeah. and then the edit mode length or swing um, by default it's the upper level of, of the the step is the upper level of the modulation or if it's in reverse depth it's the lower level right um, so however high the ladder is in positive depth remember if this if if this is set to positive depth then the higher the ladder the higher towards that upper value the, the control will be. If you set this to length, then these steps now are controlling the length of how long it stays. How long it stays at that higher value. Right. And um, let's put those back. And it can be set to swing and then you can you can put in swing in, in different steps by using the ladder. So you can assign swing to certain steps with certain amounts of swing. All right. Ah, pretty easy, right? Um, again, to create more than one sequencer, just go here and create another one, new sequencer. Now there are two of them, one which is uh, not assigned to anything, and two which is assigned to the filter one cutoff. Um, I seemed to be back to front, didn't it? <laughs> Did that happen? <laughs> uh, anyway, if I delete, you know, I can make as many sequences as I want, just like with the other modulators. Delete the last one created. And let's assign this back to our sequence. And there we go. With some depth. Anyway, super cool this and very good you know for doing things with audio loops or pieces of audio you can do great stutter effects and things okay that's your sequencer now finally the envelope follower so I select the filter there there's only one sequencer so I can't delete it so to remove this sequencer from controlling the cutoff I click it and then just do, because that's that's the target, filter one cutoff, being controlled by sequencer one. None. Now, sequencer one is not controlling anything. And again, like with the other modulators, you've got a file menu with load presets, save presets you've created, copy, paste, clear, randomize. But there are these three other values, um, import velocity, import note, and import groove. I haven't looked into those yet. We'll save those for the details video. There's more of these videos coming where we're going to get into some of the finer details, right? Okay. Uh, so let me just reset this. Clear sets it back to 16th 
well, everything's straight with hold at 50%, right? Okay. So finally, the envelope follow up. Assign it to the cutoff, cutoff selected, target filter cutoff, assign it to the envelope follower. Hurrah. I think it's an envelope follower needs something to follow, and the filter isn't actually moving itself. Um, the envelope follower is moving the filter, so we need something to trigger the envelope follower. So here's our available things that can trigger the envelope follower. And I'm going to choose source A. That is the actual source oscillator slot A actually chucking out the note. That will trigger the envelope follower, uh, which will then modulate the filter in positive depth from its low to higher value. Okay, let's do this with shorter notes. Bring the pattern back with four notes. So attack obviously is that releases how long it takes to let go. And scale is how much it modulates up or in, in reverse depth down the, the value, uh, the parameter that's being modulated. That's like all the way up and back down, and that's just a little, right? Etc. Right? Envelope follower. Again, to create more than one, just go here and do envelope follower, create new, and to delete, come here and do delete. Right? Uh, you got a file menu again. Load a preset, but there aren't any. I mean, you wouldn't you, you wouldn't create presets for this really. Save, copy, paste, and clear. Right. Alrighty, and that's your lot. Mod map. We'll leave that. It's not it's not a modulator in the sense that these are. Right. Okay. There's your modulators. Okay. It's all just the basic stuff, right? So look, we're coming to the end now, just the introductory basics. We can look at one more thing. Let's remove this filter from being modulated. Select it. It's assigned to the envelope follower, actually, so we'll set it to none. OK, that's it. Let's pull this back. OK, let's just look at the effects to finish. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Effects. Now, there's a main effects bus, and there is uh, four other effects buses, A, B, C, and D. And when you select A, B, C, or D, you'll see there's this send control marked. Come on, main effects. Okay. Now, whether you're in main or A, B, C, and D, you build your stack of effects in series here. So there's nothing in any of them. So main effects bus, and you just start putting in effects. And it doesn't. I'm, seen that there's any limit particularly you just keep on adding them and it keeps on taking them right it's just more and more and more you can make an enormous chain of effects it's quite ridiculous come on oh. so like there's a whole load of effects in the main effects bus you can scroll up and down there their control panels here or if you click on a slot, it jumps you to that particular effect. Individual effects can be turned on or off, so you can, you know, hear the chain without a particular effect or two in the chain. Right, am I right? Um, and you can drag their order. So the delays at the top, the bass enhancers underneath it. I'll move the bass enhancer to the top, and it switches places with the other one. Right, you can drag them and reorder them. Right. Um, now, if you look on the actual effects panels themselves, as we go across, some of them don't have a file menu, but some of them, like the delay, has a file menu, which has presets you can load, you can save creative presets, copy, paste, and clear back to default. So some of them have that individual menu, like the vintage compressor does. Presets, save what you've created, copy, paste, and clear. Whereas others don't have their own internal file menu. <coughs> the actual effects bus, we're in main, has a file menu itself, right, where you can load up presets and their combinations of effects, right? Set up effects in a chain of effects and save that as a preset. Copy, paste, clear, and randomize. Now, randomize doesn't chuck a load of effects into the slots 
randomly, what it does is it randomizes the values of all the effects you've got in your chain. All right? So see all their values change? <laughs> That's what it does. And obviously clear gets rid of everything. To get rid of an individual effect, just go none. All right? None. Everything else shuttles up. Actually, it's left that slot empty, right? So it's probably best to probably best to delete them in order backwards or something. I could bring this back to there and bring that back, drag to there and drag that back to there. And uh, now none is down in. Okay, that's good. Right, let's get rid of that. So you can delete them like that, or just clear the whole lot. Clear. All right. Now, uh, with the sub effects buses, it's exactly the same. You create your effects, they, they work the same, blah, blah. But at the end of, like, like, if I put a few effects in this bus, a couple of effects, right? Um, and at the end, there's always this send control in A, B, C, or D, right? Main doesn't have it. And that means you can build a string of effects. And at the end, after the signal has passed through that, you have the option of sending the output into the main effects bus. Right? Okay. So look, let's clear that. Let's clear A. We'll put a delay in here. Right? I'm going to set it to less feedback and set it to eights. Like that. And turn the send after the delay, so send to the main effects bus, turn it down. Okay, now I've got my sawtooth wave, simple sawtooth oscillator with unison feeding into the filter here. Look, filter one, two, all the way to the left. And after that, it's going to this effects send. And I'm going to switch that to send into the effects A bus. Now, bear in mind, the only places that you can send into the effects, either main or ABCD, is these two effects sends, at the, uh, one at the end of each of the two external filters, which can go to effects main or ABC or D. Or using the thing where you switch the right side of the send to bus A, B, C, or D, you can send into effects bus A, B, or C, or D, but not the main bus from these sends on each of the source slots. But I haven't seen any other ways that you can send into the effects buses. Okay, but there may be other ways. Particularly, I think you can send into those from the X, Y pads or something. But uh, in terms of the overall synth here. You've got to send there, send there, and the send, and the send control on each source slot can send into the buses A, B, C, or D, but not into main. So look, the signal's coming out of the oscillator source slot here into the filter, and then we're going to send it from there into effects bus A to the echo. Okay. Now we'll go to the main effects bus and put a reverb in here. Right now. Okay. So now. I'm sending the signal out of this oscillator source slot into this echo on effects A. And then after the signal passes through that, I'm going to send it out into the main effects bus into the reverb. OK, here we go. Etc. And of course, you can modulate any parameter of any effect with any of the modulators. So we've got a main, choose the mix for the reverb here. There it is. Target FX M main effect 01, first effect. Classic reverb mix control and assign it to the LFO, let's say. And that will modulate at quarters. Let's give it some depth, positive depth. And it's going to modulate that mix up and down, up and down. Etc. Right. So yeah, that's easy peasy, right? Any parameter of any effect can be modulated by any of the modulators. Easy peasy. Let's get rid of that. None. All right. And I'm afraid that is going to have to do you for this video. I've I've shown you all the basics, and I did spend a bit more time than I perhaps should have done on additive. But there's much, much more to look at. We've got to look at all these extra tabs: spectral pitch, format, granular, sampler, etc. Right. And there's so many other details to look at. We, we, we didn't look at this. Um, we didn't look at anything to do with this mapping and making zones and groups and all the rest of it. 
and there's the spectral stuff further to look at, but that won't happen until we bring audio in and have it analysed for spectral content, etc. Lots and lots and lots of other things to look at. But that's your basics, right? And as I usually say at this point in these videos, are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? <laughs> it's my Russell Crowe gladiator. Oh, Christ, it's a beast, this thing, isn't it? And the nightmare has only just started. That's what you have to bear in mind. <laughs> All we've done here is just brush the surface. Uh, and I deliberately went straight for the engine. You know, this browser business, yeah, that can, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? But we can come to that. And this simple is just a cut down performance controls view right which lives at the bottom by default here so we've got all this to look at and much much more besides but i hope that that introduction um was useful to you oh and there's one thing by the way there's a quality control here draft good great and ultra and for, to do ultra you have to put on your brian blessed voice you know, let's put the synthesizer into ultra mode <laughs> And basically, you know, if your CPU's struggling, you can set it into like not quite such a mega quality. Whatever is, you know, tends to default to great. I'm not having any troubles with it, but I'm not using like huge amounts of these things. Okay. But I just thought I'd quickly show you that. Um Yeah, so. Hope that was useful. That's the introduction to alchemy. Uh Let's call it the introduction to the Alchemy engine with a few extras like the effects and the modulators. And uh, I'm going to learn some more and uh, I'll come back when I've got more to show you. Okay, hope that's useful. See you for the next one.